Hello everyone and welcome to this sixth video dedicated to the initial distillation of crude oil. We have already seen together the characteristics of crudes, the salting, the hot and cold prey train and finally the liquid vapor traffic in the column. We also saw how to set the overall material balance of the column. It is now time to see how to optimize the overall heat balance of the column. In the previous videos, we have established the overall material balance of the column, and we have seen that the heat balance was a consequence of the mass balance. We have seen, as a reminder, the very large amount of energy required, both in the hot and cold prey train and in the furnace. We also repeated the very large amount of energy lost at the overhead of the column. Since we are talking about 68 gigacalories per hour, it means more than the energy involved in the furnace. We cannot afford to lose this energy to the atmosphere. So, how to recover these calories? Part of these calories will be recovered by the installation of one or more pumperons. A pumperon consists in withdrawing liquid from the distillation column then cooling it down and re-injecting it colder up in the column. The interest is twofold. First, recover calories in the column, and secondly, at an interesting thermal level. Let me explain. If we recover the calories from the other end of the column, the flow will be at the other end temperature. It means 150 degrees C. However, with this pump around, calories are extracted from the column at a higher temperature, and it will be more interesting to hit the crude. Generally speaking, in a conventional distillation column, there are two pump arounds, one at the top of the tower and one more in the bottom of the column. Let's start with the one at the bottom of the tower. So, how much calories can be removed? And most importantly, to remove these calories at an interesting thermal level, is it penalizing for the separation efficiency in the column? We have seen in the previous videos how the liquid vapor traffic in the column was established. The blue curve corresponds to the flow of liquid leaving the tray, while the red curve corresponds to the flow of gas arriving on the tray. To put it simply, we see that the gas that enters the feed tray rises in the column, once this gas flow arrives in the overhead system, the gas is condensed. Then a part is withdrawn, it is the naphtha. The remaining liquid is the reflex flow that is re-injected into the column. Then we see the flow of liquid decreasing as we go down in the column, since we will extract 72 tons per hour of kerosene at tray 7, then 37 tons per hour of light diesel at tray 16, and finally 56 tons per hour of heavy diesel on the tray 22. Let's see how this traffic is impacted as we extract calories from the column thanks to the pump around. The bottom pump around is typically at the same level as the heavy diesel. Heavy unstripped diesel is withdrawn directly from the tray 22. This liquid is then cooled and re-injected into the column two or three trays above where it was withdrawn. This requires a pump around pump and one or more heat exchangers. Let's take an example and start arbitrarily by extracting 5 gigacalories per hour. We see a high liquid flow on the tray 18 to 20. This corresponds to the pump around flow. Since 5 gigacalories per hour has been removed from the column, a portion of the upward vapor is quenched and is thus condensed. This explains why we reduce the gas flow on tray 1 to tray 18. Indeed, we do not let part of the gas rise in the tower, we condense part of it. So, this vapor that has been condensed will not go to the condenser, and therefore will not be condensed, and it will not fall back into liquid form via the reflux. This explains why the liquid flow rates are reduced from tray 1 to tray 18. 
So, to put it simply, all the liquid vapor traffic above the pump around zone is reduced. On the other end, the liquid vapor traffic below the pump around zone is unchanged. In our first example, 5 gigacalories per hour were extracted by the pump around. So, by energy balance, the overhead condenser duty will drop by 5 gigacalories per hour. As we said just before, less gas rises in the tower and therefore less liquid will be refluxed in the column. This drop in liquid vapor traffic will cause a decrease in the separation efficiency of the column above the pump around zone. Yes, this is the price to pay when removing calories at a high temperature level. The separation efficiency is reduced above the pump around zone, but not below. Indeed, the kerosene flash point drops by 0.3 degrees C. The kerosene freezing point is unchanged, as is the cloud point of the total diesel. For simplicity reasons, this graph only represents the liquid flow leaving each tray. 5 gigacalories per hour is good, but can we do better? Let's be ambitious and this time let's extract 20 gigacalories per hour from the column. Like just before, more gas is condensed when it meets the cold liquid that is re-injected, so less gas rises in the tower, so less liquid returns to the tower through the reflex. When removing 20 gigacalories per hour, the condenser duty drops by 20 gigacalories per hour, and the reflux goes down from 318 to 207 tons per hour. But what are the impacts on the product qualities? The kerosene flash point drops by 1.4 degrees C. The kerosene freezing point is almost unchanged, just like the total diesel cloud point. The question you may now ask yourself is, but is there a limit in the calories amount that can be removed with this pump around? Let's increase the amount of heat removed with the pump around to 31 gigacalories per hour. At this value, so many calories have been removed that the liquid flow which arrives above the draw-off zone of the pump around becomes close to absolute zero, and we dry out the trays above the pump around zone. You can see it very well on the graph with the flow of liquid at the tray 16, which drops to zero. And this time, the kerosene flash point drops by 2 degrees C. If we summarize, extracting calories by a pump around, it is very interesting, and we can see that we can recover a high amount of calories. This has an impact on the fractionation efficiency in the zone above the pump around, but not below. It also decreases the overhead condensation duty. We also saw that we had a maximum value that we cannot exceed, otherwise the trays above the pump around will dry out. But then, how to choose the optimal amount of heat to be extracted? There are several ways to do it. For our example, we will arbitrarily choose to remove 70% of the maximum recoverable calories before drying out the trays. This is simply to keep a margin. 70% of 31 gigacalories per hour is 20 gigacalories per hour. Once the amount of heat extracted from the lower pump around has been set, we can now focus on the top pump around. I invite you to watch the seventh video dedicated to the atmospheric distillation of crude oil. In the meantime, do not hesitate to test the knowledge by answering the quiz, whose link is available in the description of the video. Do not also hesitate to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Refining is Exciting. Thank you very, very much for your attention, and see you very soon for the next part. Bye-bye!